In this talk, we're just going to go through some other glaucoma surgeries, and much of this is an area that's in development. So this is just an overview. There are two subjects here. One is to just briefly mention gonioscenechia lysis, which is an uncommonly performed surgery, but it's useful to have in the armamentarium. And then to review a little bit the newly developing world of minimally invasive glaucoma surgeries. Gonioscenechia lysis is a procedure that's designed to break peripheral anterior synechiae and reopen access to the trabecular meshwork. Before doing this, or while doing this, one needs to address the underlying cause of angle closure. And this works best if the synechia are fairly fresh. So three years out is unlikely to be very helpful. We usually think of it as being most helpful in the first six months or maybe up to a year. And this is sometimes done in conjunction with cataract surgery. It's easier if the patient is pseudophagic than if the patient is phagic. So here's an angle that's closed. You can see the trabecular meshwork is covered with iris that runs up onto the cornea. And the idea with gonioscenechiolysis is to pull this iris away from the trabecular meshwork. And this can be done with a probe that pushes this back. Or it can be done with forceps more recently that grab the iris and pull it away from the angle. This is a patient who's just undergone cataract extraction. You can see the lens is still not fully unfolded. And using micro forceps, Dr. Carlson is grabbing the peripheral iris and pulling it away from the angle, breaking the synechia in the, uh, in the angle. This is done 360 degrees, and then postoperatively, obviously there'll be some hemorrhage, but the angle should be more open. The minimally invasive glaucoma surgeries are new glaucoma surgeries that aim to be less invasive than trabeculectomy or tube shunt surgeries. They try to eliminate the filtering blab and in general are less effective than traditional trabeculectomies and tube shunts, but trade off decreased efficacy for fewer complications and particularly in patients who don't need very, very low intraocular pressures. This is an area of rapid change and development. I think it's a really exciting area in glaucoma. And this talk will simply provide an overview of the procedures that are available. So these procedures either increase access to Schlem Canal, bypassing the area of maximum resistance, the juxtacanalicular tissue, and therefore, of course, are subject to episcleral venous pressure. So you can't really use these to try to get super low pressures because ultimately the fluid is going into the episcleral venous system that has a pressure of somewhere from 8 to 12 millimeters of mercury. They also permit flow into the suprachoidal space. So there are a few procedures that are designed to allow fluid to enter the suprachoidal space. This is an area that's less well developed. So access to Schlem Canal, there are several procedures. I'm just going to touch on them briefly. In viscocanalostomy, a deep scleral flap is created. And beneath this, a block of tissue is removed to unroof Schlem Canal. And the ends of the canal are filled with viscoelastic to dilate the canal. This has been replaced by canaloplasty, which has the same initial steps, the same unroofing of Schlem Canal. But then a special flexible cannula is inserted around the canal. And as the cannula is withdrawn, a polypropylene, a proline suture, is left in the canal and tied tightly enough to put some tension on the canal. So this beautiful video from uh, Professor Stegman in South Africa, you can see that there is 
a main flap here, an inner flap that exposes Schlem's Canal. This is a gonio just showing that there's a blinking light at the end of this cannula. And the reason that that's there is it helps to guide the cannula 360 degrees around. If the cannula veers off course up a collector channel, it can be withdrawn, the canal, the canal can be viscodilated, and eventually uh, brought around 360 degrees. You can see the flashing light coming into view here. The, can the Schlem Canal has been completely uh, 360 degrees uh, probed here, proline suture being attached and being pulled back around. And then tied to leave some tension on the canal. The external flap then is tightly closed with no intent of creating a filtering bleb. And this is a patient I saw in my clinic just showing this uh, polypropylene suture in Schlem Canal, 360 degrees. You can see the knot right there where it's been tied. So this is a very elegant procedure. I think it's somewhat technically challenging to do. And unlike some of the minimally invasive procedures, it does uh, damage a lot of conjunctival tissue. The trabectome is an ab interno form of trabeculotomy, a way in which the inner structures of the trabecular meshwork are removed, leaving just the posterior wall of Schlem Canal. So all of the juxtacanalicular tissue is now gone. It's performed with a device that electrically ablates the internal structure. It has a suction unit that removes all that tissue. So this is a video uh, by uh, Don Minkler, who is one of the inventors of the trabectome, just showing this device in Schlem Canal moving, in this case, from right to left. And you can see the white area where the canal has been unroofed, and we're just seeing the posterior wall of the canal and now go in the opposite direction. There's an insulator that protects the canal wall from being damaged. This is sometimes done in conjunction with cataract surgery. This is a patient I saw who'd had a uh, trabectome recently, and you can see the white opening where we can see the posterior wall of Schlem Canal with no overlying trabecular structures. The eye stent is a snorkel-like device that is inserted into Schlem Canal that, again, bypasses the inner structures of the trabecular meshwork. Typically, it's performed in conjunction with cataract surgery, so we know that phacoemulsification alone decreases intraocular pressure. And it, with a single eye stent, there is an added reduction of intraocular pressure by, of perhaps two millimeters of mercury. There are people who are doing now multiple eye stents um, with a bigger drop in pressure, but obviously an increased cost. And so this is Rob Honkinen uh, inserting an eye stent into a nicely pigmented trabecular meshwork. See this being pushed in here and then being released from the inserting device. This is an eye stent within the trabecular meshwork. And you can see the little snorkel-like opening right here, and then the stent itself within the trabecular meshwork. An even newer procedure is a gonioscopy-assisted trabeculotomy. In this, uh, Schlem canal is cannulated from within a suture is threaded 360 degrees around the canal and then pulled through just like a 360 degree trabeculotomy for congenital glaucoma. The difference here is that it's all done from within so there are no conjunctival incisions. So again, it's basically a 360 degree trabeculotomy without scleral dissection. 
So this video from University of Utah, if you look at the bottom, it's a little off center where they're making an incision into Schlem Canal and now dilating this with viscoelastic. And now a suture is being inserted into the canal and threaded 360 degrees around. Once that's completed, then the two ends of the suture are grasped and the inner portion of Schlem Canal is torn through so again, basically a 360 degree trabeculotomy. The big advantage here is there's no conjunctival dissection. No need to find Schlem canal through sclera or to use up any of the conjunctiva. So a very elegant and new procedure. And with all of these, we just need to understand the efficacy of, of each of these and how they stack up against other glaucoma procedures. One can also increase flow into the suprachoroidal space. So there are devices like the Solex and Cypass that are inserted through the ciliary body face into the suprachoroidal space. So this is a histopath painting and the idea would be to go from the anterior chamber into the suprachoroidal space. Fluid in the suprachoroidal space is rapidly absorbed and it's a good way to lower intraocular pressure. These permit non-conventional outflow. It's not dependent on the episcleral venous system and the trabecular meshwork, and really are a modern offshoot of a very old operation called a cyclodialysis, where the ciliary body face was detached from scleral spur. So the key points here are a lot of little surgeries that I've been in, uh, introducing you to. Goniosynechiolysis is an older operation that's used to remove fairly fresh peripheral anterior synechiae to reopen the angle. There are many minimally invasive glaucoma surgeries that are existing now and are being developed to either increase access to Schlem Canal or the suprachoroidal space with the goal of eliminating the filtering bleb. While currently less effective than traditional surgeries, they eliminate the bleb and reduce some late postoperative complications. So a view from 30,000 feet of the surgeries that are coming along in glaucoma, it's an exciting time. I think these are gonna become part of our armamentarium for managing our patients and they will only get better with time.